Parts 173, welcome to Marking Up Text. This lesson is all about text and a thing called markup. We're going to learn how to create correct text using um, an existing text file and mark it up. Um, and we're going to understand the importance of semantically correct and appropriate markup when we're done with this lesson. Um, the first thing we want to do is we want to copy and paste the text into a web page and of course when you're working on your actual homework um, you can just type this in or if you have an existing text file you can copy it from that text file. If you have a program, um, Microsoft Word is an example, um, that is capable of saving to HTML you cannot use that feature. It's going to uh, make a big mess and what we want to do is just copy the text into Dreamweaver. So um, the first thing we want to do is make sure that we've got our demo, demo folder site active and we're looking at the tutorials. And I'm going to go into the unit one and under basic text there's a file called copy.txt and you can just double click that and open it into Dreamweaver. So what this is is this just gives us a starting point for this so that we don't have to type all this in. Um, a lot of these tutorials are going to come with a starting point that we are just um, using for simplicity so you don't have to build everything from the ground up on your um, while you're learning. But um, at any rate, here's the copy that we're going to use. And I'm going to start a new file. I'm going to click File New or just Command N. And for the page type, I'll just use HTML, of course. Um, the only ones that we're ever going to use are HTML, again, and CSS. So the rest of these, again, you don't have to worry about. We'll just click Create. And <clears throat> here I am once again in Split View. And one of the things about Dreamweaver, I'm still learning on CC, but um, we don't want to be looking at live view right here. We do want the split view on, but we don't want the live view on. We want to switch that to design view. So if you've got live view on, make sure to turn that off. Um, in older versions, there wasn't this drop down, but there's a little button that says live that you can toggle on and off. Um, it's the same basic thing. <clears throat> Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the copy and just copy and paste it into my untitled document here. So the easiest way to do that is to select the whole thing and you can just click edit select all or command or control A and oops, I'm going to copy that to the clipboard. This is just basic stuff here, simple computer use. and then we're going to switch over to our new file. This is an HTML file that I'm looking at, not a text file. And I'm going to paste special. Uh, and you don't actually have to do this if you set your preferences at the beginning to paste text only. You can just click paste. But I'll, I'm going to go to paste special just so you can see it. And it gives us the option here to paste text with structure or text only. These two options are grayed out because there is no formatting bold or italic and there's no um, there's no styles either. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is just paste as text only and this is going to come out looking like a big mess. So just be ready for it. It's just it's a little scarier. It, sorry, it looks a little scarier than it is. It's not as scary as it looks is what I mean. <laughs> so what we're going to do is um, we're just going to start breaking this up into blocks. In HTML you've got uh, broadly speaking you've got two kinds of elements. You've got a block level element and you've got an inline element. Um, those are the two broad categories of elements. So inline is just in a line. It just happens without any kind of differentiation from one line to the next. If you're familiar with um, in design, it's sort of like character design, uh, character style versus paragraph style. Um, a block level element will break to a new line. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a return, which will 
open and close a P tag between the, there we go, Arts 173 markup is the, is the big header. So it's going to open and close a P tag where, wherever we press enter. So this right here is the first header, Arts 173 markup. So I'm just going to put my cursor after the word markup and I'm just going to press enter. I ended up with an extra space there. I want to delete that space. Okay, so what that does is it surrounds this with an opening and closing P tag for paragraph text. Um, and in fact, it actually surrounds the next bit in an opening and closing P tag as well, because it wasn't to begin with, but that's the only time it'll do two. For the rest of it, it'll, it'll close one and open the next. So <clears throat> what I need to do is just break this up into undifferentiated, um, I'm sorry, break this up into differentiated block level elements. So um, again, block level elements are things that automatically appear on a new line. Paragraphs, headers, lists, and block quotes. Um, and there's a lot more than that, but those are the ones that we're dealing with right now. So <clears throat> every chunk of text that belongs together, we're just going to separate into blocks. Um, the next one is going to be the beginning of the word starting from scratch, which is right here, for me at least. So, starting from scratch, just put your, S, uh, put your cursor in front of the S and press enter. And that's the next header. Again, take a look at your text down here, your code view. You've got a P tag, opening and closing before at the beginning and end of every block. I had an errant space here after the after the scratch, but it doesn't really matter. If you want it to be gone, you can delete it. Okay. The next one is simply enter the text. We'll get rid of these extra spaces. To enter text on your pages, all you have to do is simply enter the text. Um, the next one is the word P tag, right there. So, and as I'm going through this, you can see that in addition to being a tutorial for us to learn about text, there's the information in the file is also helping explain. So it's good to read these files too. So. <clears throat> I've got the next header, it says starting with a text file. Um, if you don't get these exact, by the way, it really doesn't matter that much. We're going to learn what we need to learn regardless. Okay, so the next thing I believe says text only. There it is, found it. Text only. So this is a reiteration of what you're learning from your tutorial, from your uh, lecture notes. And we're just continuing down the line to break these up into elements, um, property. I think the next one is property inspectors in the main menu, or property inspector or modified pop page properties in the main menu. Um, oh, and by the way, this is not really something that I do as much anymore. Oops, moved something. Um, you can do it if you want to, but then I want you to forget about it because we're going to learn how to style with CSS. This is not this page properties thing is not necessary for this assignment, so you don't have to worry about it too much. Um, the next bit, as we work through this, we are breaking things into block level elements. There are two kinds of elements, inline and block level. Block level automatically appear on a new line. And again, inline means in a line. So, okay, so I'm looking for as we work now. Alright, well let's do a search then. I'll use Command F to find it. Oops, nope, that was <laughs> silly me. I'm looking for the point. The point of markup. There we go. The point of markup is not 
to display change the way things look but to label it according to the kind of information that it is. This concept is important. So keep that in mind. Um, the next paragraph starts with even though all new even though all these things could be set up visually by using tabs, returns, bold, and change size size changes, that's not the right way to do it. Because that would be too easy. We don't want that. No, I'm kidding. That's what's expected of a professional web designer. It's like everything else in my class. It's in there because that's the way it works. <clears throat> so next part is the heading on more on formatting. It's right there. And here are some more examples of formatting. And this is going to give you a few different things to play with. The next line says this text is bold. This text, the next line says this text is italic. The next line says this is computer output. The next line says this is superscript and subscript. And the next line says often strong renders as yada yada. And then there's one more line. The very last sentence is its own line read more at and here's a link we're gonna set this link up too so <clears throat> just some simple stuff here just this is now a basic text file it's differentiated into block level elements and the next thing to do is actually start tagging this text um, now I could just uh, for example the first part of this needs to be a larger and bolder because it's the title of the page. Not to be confused with the document title which um, I should have set at the beginning and saved this. Thanks for reminding me. There's the document title. <laughs> Alright, let's call this um, there's probably, it was probably named something that made sense in the tutorial here. Aha, text markup. So we'll call it text markup. And I'm going to do a save as or command shift F or control shift S on a, I'm sorry, I meant to say command shift S or control shift S on a PC. And I want to save this into the folder that I'm working out of, which is unit one under basic text. So I'm just going to double click on that folder. And probably the best way to think of all these as, as indexes because for one thing it'll keep you in the habit of naming your file like index.html um, and second of all if you think of all these as like a website then that would be the first page that you would probably see um, so we're, we're gonna call that index.html we're gonna pretend like every one of your assignments is its own website even though it's in a subfolder on your server and we're going to call the first page of everything index.html. So there we go. We've got um, we've got it saved and titled now, which I should have done in the beginning. Um, and we've got this thing. Uh, now this is the title of the page as well, but it's not the same thing as this. This is metadata. It appears in the head section of your document, which the, um, the these pieces of information are more for the computer although the user does see them in their browser tab. So this is the actual presentation um, where you're saying this is the most important text. When you do that you're going to have uh, a tag that we can use called heading 1 or h1. The heading 1 is the biggest and most important text on the page. Uh, this is also what Google will index as the subtitle of your page if you're letting Google index your pages. In order to use the um, heading one you should you you should only use it once on a page. It doesn't cause any technical problems if you use it more than once but it will it, it's not best practice. It's not exactly semantically correct because there should only be H1. It should be the most important text on your page. You know typically the title. So if I grab this 
by highlighting it with my cursor just by click dragging on it and type heading one on on here um, the problem I'm going to run into is I haven't actually selected the whole element I've selected the text but I have not selected the encasing p tag so I'll have an h1 encased in a p tag if I do this right now I don't want to do that um, most of the time when I make a selection I want to use the tag selector down here to actually select the whole element this isn't always the case and as you increase in skill and ability you will develop the judgment to know when you're isolating smaller parts of a selection but easiest way to think of it right now is just use the tag selector so I'm using the tag selector to select everything in this element including the opening and closing p tag and that's what I want now I'm gonna go down to the properties and I'm actually on CSS properties right now which is not what I want I want to be on HTML properties and the format is listed as paragraph and if I click on that I can get a couple of different headings as well as the paragraph something called preformatted um, don't worry about what that means but right now h1 through h6 and paragraph text are of interest to us so like I said h1 biggest most important text on the page as soon as you click that the text is bigger it's bolder and more importantly it's correctly tagged right here we can see the h1 has replaced the p tag so I could have again done this by increasing the size of that little bit of text and bolding it but the problem with that again is that um, it's not semantically correct and by that I mean um, for one example is that Google will, will not be able to understand that this is the most important text on the page and it won't index this as the subheading of your website um, so but again it's also just bad practice it's not the correct way to do things so now the rest of these headers like I said there should only be one h1 per page so the rest of these headers should be h2's that's the next level down um, and you can you can after h1 you can use as many of those h tags as you want so you can have an infinite number of h2's and h3's uh, and they just get smaller that's just a step down the hierarchy with each one we're only going to take one step down the hierarchy but you know you could have a, a subheading like an h2 and then you could have something else that was a sub subheading like an h3 and then you could have something else that was a sub sub subheading like an h4 so um, it's there for you uh, quite a few layers in if you want it I'm gonna just change these to whoops goof that up I want to use the tag selector and I'm going to change these to H2s. And I don't actually have to even highlight anything when I'm using the tag selector. I can just put my cursor on that element and click on that tag selector, and it does just fine. Again, we're making these H2s right down there. And there's a couple, uh, one more. There's the moron formatting. you got to scroll down a little bit use the tag selector uh -oh. something weird happened there I don't know what happened but <laughs> heading to um, and okay so there's our three headings so now we're starting to mark this up now we're starting to get text that is tagged as the kind of information that it is. Um, the in this tutorial, this is going to stay P text. That means paragraph text. That means basically body copy. Um, we're going to grab that element again using the tag selector, and ooh, I think my my mouse locator is doing something weird. Well, anyway, I'm going to click on that lo that that tag selector and I'm gonna center this using the format align center <clears throat> and you can center stuff
probably the uh, the heading would be a good thing to center to. Format align center. Okay, so we're looking good. Um, there's a few more things in here that are of interest that we can tag. Uh, they're just here for just to get a couple more examples, and that's towards the bottom where it says more on formatting. <clears throat> Um, I'm going to just select this where it says this text is bold and I'm going to format this as a as an actual bold text and you can do that under the format menu or you can do it in some cases down here in the property inspector you can just click the B um, now the the bold is an inline level thing it, it applies to like I said, you're isolating parts. So you could, for example, you could just bold the word bold. That's what inline means, is that it's just isolating one part of an element. The whole element, if I click on the tag selector, this is the whole element right here. And this is going to be illustrated a little bit more visually in the next unit. When we start playing with CSS, we're going to put a, a few colors on the, on the paragraph text box so that you can actually see where the element is because this does not this does not show you the whole text box it's more like for one thing it extends all the way out to the right um, but it's it's got a little more space around it than you realize so uh, but anyway the uh, inline the the bold and italic these are inline level um, elements you don't have to select the whole tag if you don't want to so but if you do it doesn't it's not a problem so if you want the whole thing italic you can just select the whole thing I'll select the whole um, computer output. Um, I think this is under format HTML style. There we go. Format HTML style code is what I'm looking for. That's computer output. That just makes it a uh, uh, monospace font. Subscript and superscript. We'll do a format. HTML style I think is probably where it is again some of this stuff is new so bear with me nope that's not where it is well okay let's let's do a wrap tag then I think some of these require a wrap tag so um, instead of Sometimes, you know, there's a lot of tags. So instead of using the uh, insert menu, sometimes we have to just type in the tag. There are a lot of tags in HTML. You're not ever going to be, in my class anyway, tested on your memorization of tags. You just are going to need to know how to design with them. So um, if you've got a tag that you want to use that's not in there, it's really easy to add it. You can just, um, in design view, you can right click on something and you'll have this option here that says wrap tag and you can just as easily do this in code view but I'm gonna wrap this in a sub tag and as you type it you'll see this comes this pops up with your with your tags here's my sub tag and when I press enter I've got a opening and closing sub tag again inline and just for fun, I'm going to do one in code view down here. It's real easy. Um, to type in a tag, I'm just going to uh, put my cursor where I want the tag to appear, obviously, right before the word superscript. And I'm going to just type a less than. That's the shifted comma. And if I start typing the tag, it's going to help me out or try to by showing me existing tags so I typed SU and it's got sub summary and sup it's the SUP that's the superscript so you can double click that if you want to or you can just type in the SUP now when you're in code view you have to close the tag you always have to make sure you close the tag and what happens is you get a match set of opening and closing tags with every tag in design view it does it automatically for you uh, in code view 
you have to, depending on your preferences, you have to type the closing tag. So I left my preferences to say close the tag after you type less than slash. So when I type this slash, uh, it's going, that's the, that's the unshifted question mark. It's going to type in the slash sup for me right now because it knows I'm in the opening, uh, I'm in an open SUP tag. So, and this is kind of a nice thing too. Um, I don't know, I don't remember this being in CS6 or earlier. Um, when you click on a tag in code view, it highlights the opening and the closing tag so you can see where those matched pairs are. So that's kind of good. Also, it looks like, so far it's looking like their code view is, is a little cleaner in, in CC than it was before, which I'm, I'm happy about and I hope that it continues to pleasantly surprise me. But um, at any rate, um, we're watching this happen as it's built anyway, so hopefully that's helping you to start understanding how this tagging stuff works. Okay, so at any rate, now this is actually superscripted and subscripted. It's been surrounded with the um, with the tags and stuff. Okay, so <clears throat> here's a little piece of text that says often strong renders as B and EM renders as I. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Let's right click on the word strong and let's wrap a tag and we're going to wrap the tag strong around it as it were. So this is basically the same thing as a bold tag. I'll select the word, uh, I'll select the B here and I'll wrap the tag with a B. Um, but B is sort of the older way of doing things and strong is sort of the newer way of doing things. I think probably this, yeah, this by default if you're using the format menu um, or the uh, the property down here, um, it's adding a strong tag and probably this one is EM, yeah. Um, and it does not use B and I. So uh, that's because there's a difference in meaning. B or I is literal bold or italic. Strong or EM means that you want to have the text rendered in a different way that the user understands is important. So right now they're the same. Emphasis is the same as I. EM stands for emphasis. Emphasis is the same as I. EM is the same as I. Strong is the same as B. That could change someday. It's possible to change that. So, you know, that's why they just, they wanted to leave it open-ended. The people who um, design how this stuff works, they decided to make it a little more open-ended a number of years ago, but um, nothing's really been changed about how it actually renders though, but it could be. So there it is. There's a little bit on bold and strong, I and EM. So the last thing right here is just this last link where it says read more at this address. Um, right now this is not actually a link. The user would have to highlight this piece of text and copy and paste it into their um, URL window. And the user probably does not care to do that. Assume your users are lazy. That's what you want to do. They want to do as little work as possible to get to the information they want. So just embrace that and you'll do good at this. So let's not make them highlight and copy and paste this. Let's instead make this into an actual link. And the way to do that is right down here. and it's a very simple matter of just typing in whatever link you want into the link field down here in the properties. Um, and this happens to be the actual link as well. Convenient. Uh, let's just click edit, copy, and I'll just put my cursor in the link uh, pr uh, property down here. And I'm now just going to paste that link in there and press enter. Now that is underlined, which is the universal cue that that's a link that the user can click on. And you can see that it's been tagged now as a link. Okay, so that about covers markup. Um, the markup and text tools are the primary 
thrust of the first assignment. This is mainly what I want you to learn. If you want to add things like color and font changes and styles and do a little designing, um, obviously, you know, you might have some fun with that. That's fine. It's not part of your grade right now, but you can if you want to. Um, next unit, we will dive into CSS, which is going to be uh, mostly your bread and butter this semester. So, But you do have to make sure you've got all this stuff down. Um, so go ahead and save it. And let's see some blogs.